Sup bitches? I'm reliably informed that I'm terrible at pimping my stuff. So here I am, pimping my stuff in what's hopefully an amusing way. If you want to interact with me and follow me, you can find me on Twitter at Grimasaur and at Mort underscore post for official announcements. Since I've become a bit more of a public games master, people seem to think that I can give them advice. And while I can't guarantee the quality of said advice, I'm certainly willing to give it. And I do have a lot of experience, but everyone's game is different, everyone's players are different, there is no catch-all. But if you want any tips and tricks that I've developed over the years, or you're having any problems with any particular area of your game, uh, feel free to ask and I'll do some videos on these tips in the future, along with everything else that I do here in direct contravention of the best practice on YouTube. So mass combat, that's a bit of a tricky one, isn't it? As the games master, you're having to control a mass of bad guys. We're not talking battle scale here, but if you're in a life or death struggle with 20 or 30 goblins, it's a lot of paperwork for the games master and it does tend to slow down play quite a lot, which removes any sense of urgency or drama about what you're doing. Now I've developed a few tricks for dealing with this, particularly with reference to theatre of the mind play rather than miniatures and so on, but you can translate it across to a degree. The trick is to approach the monsters in a similar way to the way Tunnels and Trolls does. In Tunnels and Trolls, if you face a horde of small creatures, they're kind of conglomerated in some versions of the game into a horde, uh, a larger set of creatures, and you whittle it down as though, as though it were a single enemy. And you can translate some of that across into D&D or any other hit points based system. So what I do is I have my list of combatants and I have their hit points laid out. But rather than tracking individually who does what damage to which goblin as we go along, I start at the top and I work my way down. So your first goblin has, say, 18 hit points. The fighter hacks into it with their axe for, say, 12 hit points, leaving 6. And then the cleric bashes another goblin entirely for 4 hit points, but you knock out 4 additional hit points off the first goblin in your list. This makes keeping track of everything a lot easier for you as a games master because you don't have to individuate the damage between each and every goblin. A bit more problematic if you're playing with miniatures or a tabletop and so on, but you can still do it. You just have to watch for instances where specific damage to a specific creature is warranted, but otherwise you can just work your way down the list and whenever it tips over enough to defeat one of these creatures, you take that one off the board, whichever one it happened to be that was hit at the time. It's not as realistic, I suppose, but it does save you a lot of paperwork, a lot of brain ache, figuring out what to do, um, keeping track of all the individual hit points. Yeah, it, ju it just shaves a few seconds off, yeah, a few tens of seconds off each combat round. And there are a couple of ancillary bonuses to doing things this way as well. A party will have different kinds of characters that can do different kinds of damage, small amounts, large amounts, and by and large, if you're keeping separate track, it's mostly the frontline fighters that get to feel like a badass. They're the ones cleaving goblins down left and right with single blows. And your weaker characters aren't necessarily doing enough damage for that to be the case when they go around stabbing anyone. This can fix that. Because if you're whittling down individually, one by one, and just taking them out of the fight as the hit points tick over for each one, then more often the characters doing the small amounts of damage are going to land the killing blow on whichever goblin down the list that you, you've gone down. So even your, your mages, even when they're out of spells, even your clerics when they're out of spells, even your rogues who are better at backstabbing can occasionally get to feel like a badass by taking out a goblin in one hit. There's a few things that fox this approach, like area effect spells and so on. 
that's difficult to keep track of in theatre of the mind as well. But as a basic rule of thumb, if someone, say, launches a fireball into a crowd of goblins, have it hit as many as the radius in spaces, five foot spaces. And that will tend to work. Fairly short video, so quick additional updates. Um, I've pretty much beaten the, the double ear infection that I had and I'm trying to catch up with everything that I was promising to people before that happened. So if we were talking about me being on a podcast or something other than Legion of Myth, uh, let me know. Uh, we'll reschedule and sort it out as soon as possible. And sorry for being flaky, but it was absolute agony. Uh, Table Topless is going well. We're now on Wednesdays at about 9.30 p.m. UK start over on Plex Storm. Uh, so if you like uh, your naughty adult D&D fun, you can find us over there playing games and getting naked. Don't worry, I don't get naked. Um, other than that, I guess uh, back back to work for me. So um, yeah, back to Whitechester probably. I'll try and do updates on the blog to let you know how things are proceeding. Zang. Machinations of the Space Princess is an old-school RPG with a sci-fi setting. The rules are familiar and at once innovative. Opened up so you can play literally any alien species you can envision. Purchase it at RPG Now or Lulu.com.